What's going on, guys? And this is a this is a train. 4TWX36. It's gonna be a two-stage, three-ton unit. And I guess the complaint we're getting is that when we have the cold nights and it's in the you know mid upper 20s. They keep it set on 68 at night when they go to bed. This is an elderly couple. It's their downstairs unit. Another one over there. Train. About three years older. But, uh, you know, when they get up in the morning, she turns it up to 70, 71. And she said the last few times that's happened, it takes two, three hours for it to get up to temperature or to the set point in the house. So I just want to double check things, just make sure the auxiliary heating is working like it should, check the charge on it, make sure it's staging. You saw the, <laughs> the little short video there at the beginning, so the original problem was what I just described, but she was, uh, <laughs> she said another thing she noticed is that the <laughs> The blower just runs all the time. There's always a, a slow little draft breeze sometimes, even when the thermostat's off or when it's uh, satisfied, not calling for heat. But, uh, I guess they didn't know that the uh, fan was turned on to run 24 hours a day. So she said the fan, the thermostat was too fancy for for them. <laughs> They really would like something simpler, but that's what that's what came with the unit. And that's what got installed with it. Now, I can go back in there and turn off programming, things like that, and make it a little simpler for her if she'd like. But anyway, I turned it up to about 78 degrees. Get this thing on, get it running. I've got to break her off while I was getting getting my bag and get everything opened up. But uh, uh, one thing I'm already noticing, and I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, is right here around this fitting. All the oil residue around this thing. And I wonder if this Schrader core is leaking. I mean, look at all that. And, uh, and it's all down the pipe. Look at that. Right there. Just all over. All over the pipe. So we're going to get hooked up to this thing first and check the charge. Because that may very well be what our problem is. Because this thing's got an outdoor sensor tied into it. So there's going to be a lockout for the heat strip. So as soon as the temperature outside gets above whatever the... You know, heat strips are rated or set for for a lockout. Obviously, they're not going to come on, but you know, if it's 26, 27 degrees outside, which we've had several of those mornings here recently, and it's just running heat strips, and this thing's low on charge and it's got no capacity, that may explain why it's just running and running and running. And then when the heat strips aren't on, it's just the heat pump running, it's not producing a whole lot of heat, so it's going to feel cool and drafty. So Let's get hooked up to it and check the pressures. Alright, so I have just turned it on. We're going to let these pressures stabilize a little bit. And obviously this unit has an EEV on it. It's a two-stage. Right there is a little rectifier for the second stage operation. That little green light will flash once when it's running in single stage and it will flash twice when it's in two-stage. Right now, still see it one flash, still in first stage. So I want to run it. I'm going to have to run this thing in second stage, and I'm not going to wait for the thermostat. What I want to do is I'm just going to jump out first stage to second stage, and that should energize back to the air handler as well, and it will give us. Airflow we need inside once the air handler gets that 24 volts back. It will also 
ramp up my airflow with these two stage units you want to really check them and, it's, and here we are it's 58 degrees outside running a heat pump if it's a little bit low on charge you're still going to get a little bit of a uh, the, the pressures are going to you know, just it's just it's just going to pull heat in so i'd really rather be checking the charge on this thing when it's about 35 30 35 degrees 40 degrees outside i may run it in cooling get it warmed up in the house it's uh 58 59 degrees i might be able to run it long enough to check the super heat and sub cooling on it there's oil around that pipe for a reason when i took the cap off there was a little bit of a pressure hiss on it <coughs> so it may very well be a little low on charge I've got it up in second stage now. You see it's flashing twice. Right there, second stage. Oh, going out on head pressure there. It's going out on low pressure. Where's the high pressure? That was strange. Does. That blower motor should be ramping up. Let's see where this stabilizes out at. One thing I want to check is going to be my suction pressure transducer right here. This transducer reading the suction pressure, translating that into a temperature. And then using the suction line temperature sensor to measure superheat and that's what regulates or allows this board with that information to control this EEV outside and it's right here you just check DC voltage on that what you want to do is go right across here we're doing DC voltage just go across the black wire and your white wire right there and then you're going to read your DC voltage which right there is 1.7 and my suction pressure right now is 123 PSI so at 1.7 it's 118 on the chart I was a little above 1.7 1.76 so that's going to be closer to 120 120 so 125 suction i know that's working properly but here's my issue look at that head pressure suction's 126 head pressure is 199 let me check my superheat down here on that suction line real quick Who shows I'm running a 16 degree superheat right there on this outdoor unit, which is not bad. But it's 57 degrees out here. That head pressure should be really, really high. So I'm going to switch this thing into cooling. And then we're going to check it and see what the charge is in cooling mode. Alright, so I went and switched it into cooling. We're going to check it. It's like 60 degrees outside now, so... 72 in the house so i'm gonna just run it in cooling temporarily but there's just oil everywhere i swear i think this thing's probably lost charge lost some of the charge there's just oil all over these pipes out here while i'm waiting for it to come on i'm gonna check that temperature sensor as well real quick and See what it's see what it's giving me. So it's giving me 1.8 volts DC, and based on our chart here, 1.8. It's going to be around 62 or so degrees in between 60 and 65, right there, and. temperature I'm reading is 
61.4 so that's right at 62 degrees so I mean it's the sensor for this control is reading accurate the transducer is working properly so let's just see what it does when it comes back on and we'll see what our pressures are on this thing but I think it's gonna need some refrigerant put in it all right we just came back on in cooling We'll let it run in first stage for a couple of minutes let my blower inside ramp up and uh, then we'll engage second stage but I popped under the house real quick when I went in to switch the thermostat to cooling popped under there looked at the air handler don't have any fault codes flashing on the air handler no alert codes just standby for TAM 9 air handler so um, if there's a problem in there it'll display a fault and I'm not seeing one in there yet but after I ran it and what it was doing a while ago there was no fault error code displayed at the air handler so any problem I'm having I believe is going to be out here but I believe it's going to be all this refrigerant that is obviously leaked out of this thing the cap had the o-ring in it but there was oil down in it more than likely it's a bad Schrader core but we'll see what our pressures do in cooling mode Let me look at the chart real quick and we'll just go see what our sub cooling is on this thing but we've got a so we've got a tam 9 air handler but all these refrigerant charts are showing tam 7 now if it's sized right and your airflow is set up that should be the same as the tam 9 the controls have changed a little bit but your airflow and your blower and things like that will operate the same so in cooling mode it's 60 degrees outside in stage one oh let's see we're at about 86 and 197 in cooling mode right now and the superheat on this thing is climbing up towards 21 at this point but uh suction pressure I, I want to be looking at now this is a wet bulb that one's dry bulb but we'll just use the middle I'm guessing my suction pressure should be somewhere in that 120 range but my head pressure should be about 240 to 250 and it's at 197 we put it in second stage because that's the one I really want to check the charge in running at full capacity now let it run a minute so my mistake on that one we've got an 850 thermostat not an 824 there's a relay panel under here so this is communicating so jumping out w1 or y1 and 2 outside it doesn't necessarily back feed to the air handler to run second stage blower because it's still in first stage so i've got to actually go to the thermostat and put it in test mode for second stage so let's go do that all right guys so that was on me i was under here thinking i didn't know i had a relay panel so typically without a relay panel 24 volt control we got a communicating air handler under the house and a 24 volt controlled outdoor unit so when i was jumping this out out here into second stage it wasn't feeding back to the Y2 terminal at the air handler and ramping up the motor like it would in a 24 volt control it was still running in single stage airflow so now I've just got it in test mode at the thermostat we're running about a 100 and a 212 in cooling second stage 60 degrees outside it tells me I should be at about 125 and 240 to 245 and I'm running at 100 and 214. I've got a high superheat. Subcooling is nine. I'm not concerned a lot about that because it's cool outside. It's gonna subcool real quick <laughs> with 60 degree air going through there. But I'm gonna that oil was there for a reason, so I'm gonna change that Schrader core out and probably top the charge off a little bit on this thing and uh, see what it does. Place this Schrader core 
And then I got about a you know, a little piece of jug of 410A in the truck, about a pound and a half in it. And we'll top the charge off on this thing and then I'll schedule a follow-up visit probably in about a month if we don't hear back from them between now and then. And uh, double check the charge, make sure everything is working still. this thing out this has always just been something tricky for me to do sometimes I can get it out sometimes it, the first time sometimes I don't it just depends on how well this thing fits okay so it did turn and loosen is it supposed to snap in the end of this thing and for whatever reason sometimes it just doesn't snap in it because you should just be able to hook into it once you loosen it slide it out and it stays clipped in the end but these things don't always my cheaper one actually works better than this Appion we're gonna try it first let's see if it'll see if it'll come out it didn't get stuck Nope, didn't come out. That irritates me a little bit. Because I wonder if it's just not wide enough to grab it or something. I don't know. So I'm going to put the Appion back away and get my yellow jacket. All right, let's see how the yellow jacket works. You hate to charge that much money for those things. I mean, I typically only use those. I don't know why I grabbed that one to begin with when I'm doing a, a vacuum on a system. But you still have to get the Schrader core out to do that properly if you're going to use those. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's just So I'm on there real good. Should be snapped in the end of this thing. And then we're going to back it out. Real easy, don't want it to shake off. Close this thing. And we'll see what's in here. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. There you go guys. Yellow jacket versus Appion. You decide. So let me get a new Schrader core. Alright, new Schrader core. Slide that in, screw that down, open the valve, all right. I'm gonna turn it back on and we're gonna set the charge on it. Alright guys, so I've got all everything hooked up, charging tea, refrigerant, and then we'll start throttling. A little bit of this refrigerant in there, get this thing charged. Shouldn't take a whole lot, but uh, we'll get we'll get this thing set up and run it in heat when I get done, maybe not, but those pressures closer to where I think they need to be at based on the charging chart with the unit. And uh, we'll do a follow-up visit out here in about three to four weeks and check it on a colder day. But uh, with all that oil on there, I mean, Everything else checked fine. It is what it is. Schrader cores, they do leak. Thanks for watching, guys.